the majority of you who've been reading for the last five or six years have been reading, uh, I mean, with regard to me and my life, the majority of what you've read is fantastically, horrifically written fiction. So J.D. calls out A.H. and her lies, calls out the media. Oh, and he calls out Hollywood, too. Check this out. I don't have much further need for Hollywood myself. I don't, I don't know how you guys feel, but yeah. Now, there's a lot more to this, too, with J.D. calling out Hollywood, Warner Brothers, A.H., the media. Oh, it is golden here. You and I, we're going to look at all of that today. Fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. All right, so hey there, by the way, let's get started. Mentioned in an interview in the Sunday Times back in 2021 that you felt boycotted by Hollywood. Do you still feel that? Do you still f do you feel that the tide is changing toward you doing major studio films again? So you notice that is a two-part question, by the way. Number one, do you still feel boycotted like you did in 2021? And number two, do you think that you can actually return to making Hollywood films? Um, it's not my tide <laughs> that we're discussing. Um, did I feel boycotted by um, Hollywood Well, I mean, you'd have to not have a pulse to feel <laughs> at that point, to, to feel like, no, none of this is happening. It's, this is actually just a kind of a weird joke. You've been asleep for 35 years. Um, so just let the weirdness commence. Of course, you know, I mean, when you're asked to resign from a film you're doing, so right there, I mean, when you're asked to resign from a film you're doing, that's putting Warner Brothers on blast. I mean, them point blank there because of what happened with Fantastic Beasts. Plus, I mean, you can throw Disney into the fray as well because of what they did with Pirates. Because of something that is merely a bunch of kind of vowels and consonants floating in the air. Right there, too. I mean, you're calling out all of these false accusations. I mean, that's what they are. They're just a bunch of vowels and consonants. They're throating through the air. We don't actually have any proof anything transpired, but that didn't matter at all. Um, yeah, you feel a bit boycotted. Do I feel boycotted now? No, not at all. Um, but... I don't feel boycotted by Hollywood because I don't think about it. Now there, that's the first part of the question, though. Do you feel boycotted by Hollywood? Notice that. Not talking about do you feel boycotted by the every person out here. Do you feel boycotted by Hollywood? No, not really. Why? Because of success. Because I'm out here, I'm doing my own thing, and this leads on oh, to the most epic part of this, in my opinion. I don't think about Hollywood. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't have much further need for Hollywood myself. I don't, I don't know how you guys feel, but yeah, I think uh, it's a very strange, funny time where everybody would love to be able to be themselves, but they can't because they must fall in line with the person in front of them. You want to live that kind of life. I wish you the best. Now, on top of that, you had this question as well, talking about the quote-unquote controversy returning to Cannes. Check this out and check out the answer. Uh, Johnny, we know that Cannes is a wonderful place for movies, but it's also a great <coughs> mediatic circus. So how do you feel <laughs> coming here, coming back on the spotlight, a lot of controversy, not especially talking about the movie. How both do you feel with that sometimes toxic surrounding. Thank you. Can, I mean, um, I first came to Cannes, <clears throat> it was like 92 or something. I came to Cannes accidentally, to the festival accidentally with Emil Kusturica and um, it was a absolutely 
a circus like I'd, nothing I'd ever seen. It remains <laughs> the same. And uh, I think that's very good. Um, different faces, same actions, same everything. Um, and so the circus, the circus part is the weirdest part. Um, because it's it's sort of like uh, like you say you know people folks out there want to well I mean you believe what you believe the truth is the truth it, you know um, as far as it being a positive or a negative to the film all the sort of um, abstract whispers um, it, you know what, what that all that does is it maybe maybe people talk about the film in this way or they will talk about your work in, in a certain way up to a certain point but the fact is like we're all here because we made a film. Not because we have a product to sell, <clears throat> but we made a film. Everything that <clears throat> the majority of you who've been reading for the last five or six years have been reading, uh, I mean, with regard to me and my life, the majority of what you've read is fantastically, horrifically written fiction. Um, so, the fact is, as I was saying, we're here to talk about a film, but, you know, it's like asking a question. How are you doing? <laughs> but what's underneath in the subtext is, God, I hate you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that's the sort of media thing. But the focus should be simply on the fact that it's a miracle to get a film made that you care about in the first place. So mm. you succeed there, you win right there. Mm. Um, but to get a film like this made and with the caliber of, of people and the vision of a, of a tr absolutely, you know, <clears throat> a forward-moving uh, artist. Uh, that That's the focus. That should be the real focus. And you also had this from Variety. I talked about that yesterday, but listen to how he handles this all together. Deb, related to what you said earlier, uh, there has been a bit of controversy about your presence here in Cannes regarding your past legal matters, personal legal matters. Um, what would you say to those who think you should not have been here at the festival? <laughs> well, so um, we're talking theoretically about what would I do if there were people who didn't want me to come to the Cannes Film Festival? What if one day they did not allow me, under no circumstances, no matter what, I cannot go to McDonald's for life. <laughs> because somewhere, if you got them all in one room, there'd be 39 angry people watching me eat a Big Mac on a loop. just for fun. Um, who are they? Why do they care? Some kind of, some species, some tower of mashed potatoes <laughs> covering the light of a computer screen, anonymous, with apparently a lot of spare time. I don't think I'm the one who should be worried. 
I think I think people should really think about what it's all about, really.